There are several approaches to defining the substance and scope of technology policy. According to the American scientist and policy advisor Louis M. Branscombe, technology policy concerns the public means for nurturing those capabilities and optimizing their applications in the service of national goals and interests. Branscombe defines technology in this context as the aggregation of capabilities, facilities, skills, knowledge, and organization required to successfully create a useful service or product. Other scholars differentiate between technology policy and science policy, suggesting that the former is about the support, enhancement, and development of technology, while the latter focuses on the development of science and the training of scientists. Rigas Arvanitis, at the Institut de Recherche pour le Développement in France, suggests that science and technology policy covers all the public sector measures designed for the creation, funding, support, and mobilization of scientific and technological resources. Technology policy is a form of active industrial policy, and effectively argues, based on the empirical facts of of technological development as observed across various societies, industries and time periods, that markets rarely decide industrial fortunes in and of their own and state intervention or support is required to overcome standard cases of market failure which may include, for example, underfunding of research and development in highly competitive markets, technology policy may be more broadly defined. Michael G. Pollitt offers a multidisciplinary approach with social science and humanities perspective on good policy. Topic: <laughs> Technological determinism. Technological determinism presumes that a society's technology drives the development of its social structure and cultural values. The term is believed to have been coined by Thorstein Veblen (1857–1929), an American sociologist and economist. The most radical technological determinist in the United States in the 20th century was most likely Clarence Ayres who was a follower of Thorstein Veblen and John Dewey. William Ogburn was also known for his radical technological determinism. Viewed through the lens of science policy, public policy can directly affect the funding of capital equipment, intellectual infrastructure for industrial research, by providing tax incentives, direct funding or indirect support to those organizations who fund, and conduct, research. Vanvar Bush, director of the Office of Scientific Research and Development for the U.S. government in July 1945, wrote, "...science is a proper concern of government." Vanvar Bush directed the forerunner of the National Science Foundation, and his writings directly inspired researchers to invent the hyperlink and the computer mouse. The DARPA initiative to support computing was the impetus for the Internet Protocol stack. In the same way that scientific consortiums like CERN for High Energy Physics have a commitment to public knowledge, access to this public knowledge in physics led directly to CERN's sponsorship of development of the World Wide Web and standard Internet access for all. The first major elaboration of a technological determinist view of socioeconomic development came from the German philosopher and economist Karl Marx, whose theoretical framework was grounded in the perspective that changes in technology, and specifically productive technology, are the primary influence on human social relations and organizational structure, and that social relations and cultural practices ultimately revolve around the technological and economic base of a given society. 
Marx's position has become embedded in contemporary society, where the idea that fast-changing technologies alter human lives is all-pervasive. Although many authors attribute a technologically determined view of human history to Marx's insights, not all Marxists are technological determinists, and some authors question the extent to which Marx himself was a determinist. Furthermore, there are multiple forms of technological determinism. On the subject of technology as a means to liberation or enslavement, a question arising from a technological determinist perspective, David E. Cooper wrote in the Royal Institute of Philosophy Supplement 38-7-18 people myopically impressed by the world as an object of beauty or worship die out. Those who are myopically impressed by it as a source of energy do not, they even prosper. Technology policy and economics Technology policy takes an evolutionary approach to technical change, and hereby relates to evolutionary growth theory, developed by Luigi Passanetti, J. S. Metcalf, Pier Paolo Saviotti, and Cohen Franken and others, building on the early work of David Ricardo. J. S. Metcalf noted in 1995 that much of the traditional economic theory of technology policy is concerned with so-called market failures which prevent the attainment of Pareto equilibria by violating one or other of die conditions for perfect competition. In contrast to the evolutionary paradigm, classic political science teaches technology as a static black box. Similarly neoclassical economics treats technology as a residual, or exogenous factor, to explain otherwise inexplicable growth for example, shocks in supply that boost production, affecting the equilibrium price level in an economy. In the United States, the creation of the U.S. Office of Science and Technology Policy responded to the need policy approaches wherein not all technologies were treated as identical based on their social or economic variables. Technology policy is distinct from science studies but both have been influenced by Thomas Samuel Kuhn. Research in the technology policy domain recognizes the importance of, amongst others, Vanvar Bush, Moses Abramovitz, William J. Abernathy and James M. Utterback. Technology policy approaches science as the pursuit of verifiable or falsifiable hypotheses, while science studies has a postmodern view whereby science is not thought to get at an objective reality. Technology policy is rarely postmodern. Its goal is the improvement of policy and organizations based on an evolutionary view, and understanding, of the underlying scientific and technological constraints involved in economic development, but also their potential. For example, some clean coal technologies via carbon sequestration and the allocation of electromagnetic spectrum by auction are ideas that emerged from technology policy schools. The dominant design paradigm, developed by William J. Abernathy and James M. Utterback, is an idea with significant implications for innovation, market structure and competitive dynamics both within and between nations that emerged from empirical research in technology management, a domain of technology policy. Issues Net neutrality Regulation of unmanned aerial vehicles Artificial intelligence and law Artificial intelligence in healthcare Telecommunications policy of the United States 
Topic: Policy Schools. The study of technology policy, technology management or engineering and policy is taught at multiple universities. Topic engineering M. Phil in Technology Policy at University of Cambridge, Judge Business School and Department of Engineering, University of Cambridge, United Kingdom born out of the Cambridge MIT Institute MSc in Technology and Policy and Engineering and Systems Division at MIT Engineering and Public Policy at Carnegie Mellon University Department of Engineering Economic Systems and Operations Research at Stanford Center for Innovation Policy and Technology Research at IST Lisbon in Portugal Technology, Policy and Management at TU Delft in the Netherlands Department of Technology and Society at Stony Brook University BS per Mega Siemens in Engineering, Science Technology, and Public Policy at Rochester Institute of Technology, Rochester, New York. Topic: Information Technology. Heinz College of Information Systems and Public Policy at Carnegie Mellon University. The Center of Information Technology Policy at Princeton University. School of Information at University of California at Berkeley. Informatics at Indiana University at Bloomington School of Information at University of Michigan Penn State College of Information Sciences and Technology Science and Technology SPRU Science and Technology Policy Research METU Science and Technology Policy Studies MS in Science, Technology and Public Policy at Rochester Institute of Technology, Rochester, NY School of Public Policy at Georgia Tech See also Industrial Policy